Okay, 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 okay. I gotta make this quick video because my gasted is flabbered. So I'm looking through comments on the Switched Outlet video, probably my most controversial one ever. And those of you who live in a place where there are switches on outlets keep saying things like, well, actually, the switch is really handy because it lets you leave things plugged in without having to pull them out all the time. Okay. This toaster oven is plugged in, but you know what? It's off because this thing is a switch. It is an actual switch. And if it is off, there's no circuit here. So if I turn it on, now the indicator lights up and the uh, heating elements are coming on. This is a switch. A power switch is in the appliance. It is 100% normal for things that are sold here to have their own power switches. Okay? So, yeah, we are not unplugging things whenever we don't want to use them. We just leave them plugged in. Okay, coffee maker. Plugged in the kilowatt, right? It's dead. There is no circuit until you turn that switch on. And now it's drawing power. I'm gonna turn it off because there's no water in there. But that, that, this is why I'm so confused, folks. A notable exception, there are three kitchen items that seem to never have power switches. Those are basic rice cookers. I don't know how universal that is because I don't have that much experience with them, but this guy, you plug it in, it's in warm mode always. It has no off switch. This just toggles between warm and cooking. Then there is popcorn poppers. I don't know why those don't have a power switch. They really should because they draw a lot of power. And then there is waffle irons. Those are the three kitchen appliances I can think of that don't have power switches. However, what they all have in common is, generally, you're not gonna leave them on the countertop all the time. So I think the rationale there is that you're only going to use them occasionally where you would be plugging and unplugging anyway, so there's no point to add a switch. I don't know. So when all you are saying that the switch is nice because it lets you leave things plugged in, what that makes me wonder is, are all of your appliances like our rice cookers and waffle irons and they just don't have power switches? Or are you just that paranoid about electricity? Because here's the thing. Yes, right now, this wire is live. I will admit, if I were to start chewing through this wire, I could get zapped. The GFCI outlet would probably prevent me from getting harmed, but there is live potential here. However, again, the device has a power switch. There's no circuit, this thing is off. If I took a multimeter and measured resistance across the power pins, it would be infinite because there's no circuit, okay? So when I hear you say the switches on the outlets are helpful because it, <laughs> because it keeps you from unplugging things, Again, that's just not something we do. And then the reason why to me they seem really, really redundant is because if there were an emergency, if something were wrong with this toaster oven, say contents ignited, I love how that language is standard now. If something were wrong with it and I needed to kill power to it by reaching to the plug where those switches are, my hand is right here and I can just pull it out. So again, I don't know if there's a disconnect between stuff sold in the UK and Australia just doesn't have its own power switch, or if those two kind because I know Britain's really paranoid about electricity. I mean, shaver sockets, really? But anyway, that's, I just needed to make this because I feel like I'm losing my mind here. We don't unplug things and plug them back in all the time because all of our stuff has power switches. With the weird exception, really the only three things I can think of are the rice cookers, the popcorn popper, poppers, and the waffle makers, the small kitchen appliances you aren't gonna leave on the counter. But everything else that I can think of has a power switch. What I will give you as an advantage is that you can kill vampire loads which of course there are a lot of these days. However, 
where you're going to have the most vampire loads are places where it's really inconvenient to reach down to that switch, like uh, an entertainment system where you might have everything in front of the switch. So it's not convenient anyway. I just, I, I can't get it, folks. It's never going to register. I guess I can see there being a slight benefit to the switch, but as far as giving it, giving a safety advantage or quote unquote, allowing you to leave things plugged in, neither of those make any sense to me because if you have to reach to where the plug is to kill it, you can also just remove the plug. Right. And as a reminder, I'm not defending our plugs. These are bad. Um, it is way too easy to hold this be touching it like that while you plug in and get a shock. This is a bad design. We just still use it because it's ancient and, you know, installed base and everything. It's not going to get, it's not going to get fixed. We could potentially start sleeving these, but I don't know if that would cause compatibility issues with different outlets anyway. I'm not defending this plug. This is still probably among the worst designs in the world, and we really only get away with it because we only have 120 volts, not 240. If we had 240 with these plugs, we would have fixed it ages ago. Oh, the other thing I should point out, people, because I know some people are also like afraid of making an electrical connection when the outlet is live. That's fine. Sorry about that. That's fine. It doesn't like, here, if I, I showed this in one of my videos. If I turn on the toaster oven, and now I unplug this, it's gonna arc. Jeez, didn't get any arcing there. Oh, these, by the way, are tamper-proof outlets because this is a newer home, so, um, hi, Reed. All the, all the people that are always, like, we finally have that now. They're kind of annoying, actually, but we have them now. You have to put pressure on both blades in order for it to accept it. Jeez, I'm not even seeing any arcing. Anyway, my point is doing this is not the best idea because you're getting a little bit of arcing. It damages the contacts, but that happens inside there. It's not going to hurt you. <sighs> Probably going to release this video and I'm going to regret it, but I'm doing it anyway.